Hey, good afternoon, everybody. We're a couple, maybe five or 10 seconds uh, right before 12 o'clock. Going to be sharing a dream today called Get Out While You Can and Take Who You Can. I had this between August 14th and the 18th. And uh, I want to make a a real quick statement before I I read through the dream and Sheree and I start working on it. And that is this. I am getting an incredible number of requests for religious exemptions. And as a matter of fact, I've got 300 emails right now that I will not be able to respond to by even by Friday or Saturday. A lot of you work in different businesses, different medical fields, and some of those places require certain forms linked to your business or, or a lot of the health, the healthcare fields. So if you can send me that, that specific form, I can sign it. I can send it back. Also, I'm hearing from some folks that are saying it has to be a real ink. It can't be a fo- photocopy or a scanned image. So check with those people. If you're coming on Saturday for the prayer event, bring your form. I will sign it. No problem at all. I just want to make sure that everything that you're doing is going to meet all the specs of the things that are happening on my From the Perch on Thursday. I'm going to be dealing a lot with FDA situation, the FDA approval of the of the of the mandate and also talking about some of the legal things that some businesses are trying to do and some attorneys that are working to help those that are employed. So uh, that's kind of just it. And we are we're our numbers continue to go up. We're still open. Come if you can. Uh, we should have probably around 200 people. And I'm still humbled and amazed that that you folks want to come to Burksville, Kentucky uh, to pray. But we're going to we're going to do something that changes the church. I really believe that we're not praying for the nation that day. We're praying for the church. And I really believe the heart of, 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 of the church is what came out in this dream. So I'm going to go ahead and start reading. Uh, I know Cherie's got a lot of scripture today. So you might want to grab your Bible and bring it back and look and have it ready to prepare. Or if you're taking notes, be ready for that. Uh, we're both going to talk a little bit about the dream and, and some of the things that are with it. But I just want to let you know that I believe this is a now dream. I believe this isn't a year from now, two years from now, ten years from now. I believe this is a now dream. So uh, humbly I will read this because I feel it. I was standing in front of a hospital watching severe storms all around me. And I saw lots of people rushing into that hospital with bags and luggage and hotel items. An ambulance uh, backed up to the front door and people jumped out with hands full of bagged groceries. One man had nothing but an old brown grocery bag like you would have in the 70s. And it was full of day old bread. And that's what the bag said, day old bread on the bag. The pace of people running was quickened by the lightning. There was these fire, like lightning had fire in it. And the fire would like go down the ends, hit the earth and kind of go out. And then the lightning would go back up. And this was like not a flash of lightning. This was, it took like a couple seconds to hit the ground and it was fiery orange. The, uh, the pace of the people was quickened because of that. And the people, because the, the, hot, the storms were hovering near the hospital. So, but there was no rain yet. The man with the bread yelled at me to get inside where it was safe and that he had enough bread for everybody. I then found myself walking into the building with people who were rushing in beside me. They were bumping up against me, almost knocking me down. They were in such a hurry. They went into the doors. They were dropping keys, trying to get, you know, they were, they, their hands were full. They're, they're trying to get their keys out. They're dropping keys, but they're panicking, trying to get into these doors. They're running for like their life depended on it. And there was a panic on every face that I saw. There were a few doors open and people asked what was going on, but no one who was rushing in said a word. They just ran to their doors to get in. And I ascended the only staircase that was to my right. And I headed up a very darkly lit, eerie, it was almost surreal and eerie uh, staircase. I next realized I was standing in an open door of a hospital room. There was a large window to the back of the outside, and the outside through the window, I could see looming storm clouds and what seemed like that fire lightning. It was just incredibly thick lightning, and it was, it was flashing for one or two seconds, and it looked like fire was actually coming down from heaven and hitting the ground and, and going on for that. Um, the thunder was shaking the building, and sitting on the bed was the woman with her face in her hands. And I recognized her as that emaciated woman who was told to heal before she got up from a previous dream. And uh, she was praying and she was sobbing. And her prayers dealt with how lost the church was and people not listening and things that weren't happening and people that weren't ready to meet Jesus. And she was praying and sobbing. And she got up and she looked out the window. And she became afraid. There was fear in her face. She became afraid uh, with what she saw. And she immediately sat on the floor and began to shake. She just kind of slid down the wall and began to shake. And the thunder shook the building. Even the floor in the building shook. I could feel it in the dream. She said, Lord, I need to get out of here. And suddenly that man that I see so often 
appeared right next to the window, right next to her. And he said, I need you to work. So she said, Lord, I need you out of here. And he says, I need you to work. And she kept her head down and she said, but things are crumbling around me. And the man bent down and put her face in his hands. He said, I will go through the fire with you, but you must work now. And the emphasis was on the word now. You must work now. He repeated it to her and he put his hand, he put his hands on her head and oil spilled over her. And she said, Lord, how can I do this? And he said, I've anointed you and I will lead you and I will guard you. As I was standing in the door as like an invisible observer, I noticed that smoke was coming up between my legs and up around me into the, the hospital room. And the man spoke and he said, get out while you can and take who you can with you. He then repeated it to her. He helped her get up and then he dis and then he disappeared right in front of her. She went to the door. She covered her mouth with her sleeve. And the hallway, the entire hallway was engulfed in flames. The sign on the wall said fifth floor. And there were doors that she began to beat on and she was telling people to get out, get out, get out. And most of those doors stayed shut, but people inside yelled to leave them alone. One door opened and they screamed at her to leave them alone and stay put for her own good. And the guy said, trust in man and stay. And he slammed the door and he shut. He slammed it shut. The woman walked down the stairs to the fourth floor, began beating on doors, begging people to follow her, her out. Parts of the ceiling were falling around her and some of it was on fire. Matter of fact, it hit her and it caught a bit of her hair on fire and she had to stop and pat her hair out. A few of the doors opened as she banged on them and a few people hesitantly, and I use that, it, they just kind of looked around the door and looked to see what was going on and they hesitantly came out. They were covering their heads and they were coughing due to all the smoke. The woman told them to beat on the doors and snatch them out if need be. So she told them, knock on these doors, beat on these doors, get these people's attention and snatch them out. So they knocked on, they knocked on the doors, but very few people responded. The group was now of about six people and they went down the stairs to the, to the third, second floors. By the time they got to the first floor, there was a group of about 45 to 50. I did not get an exact count, but it looked like about 45 to 50 people were covered in soot. Their clothes were torn from falls and trying to jump over the debris that was burning in the hallway corridors and the stuff was just in the way. And they were sweating and moving even more quickly than they had been. And now they were frantic. I mean, they were they were running as fast as they could, beating on doors, begging people to come out of the building. It was very, they kept saying, it's unsafe, it's unsafe. Please get out, get out, get out. The ceiling tile began to fail. Well, the, I'm sorry. They were still coming out in the hall, heading for the main exit, and the building got hit by lightning and it shook. And it was almost like this glow of lightning, this fire lightning kind of glow. It fit the whole, the whole room, lit, the corridor this lit up. Steel beam, ceiling tile fell on some of the group, and some people's clothing caught on fire. There were still beams that fell from the ceiling on some of them. They had to be dragged out from under the debris and then carried towards the door. It took people to lift the debris up. And people carried and helped drag them on their shoulders uh, to, to the door. And they were beating and crying as they did. They, they just kept yelling for those that were still in the room. So those people who had been hurt by the still beams were yelling and screaming, come out, come out, come and escape with us, come and escape with us. And the building shook again and the woman cried for them all to get out while they could. They ran to the glass doors. They poured out and down the steps until they hit ground level. It's like, I can't, I, I'm thinking it was three steps down. And they went out in front, like in an open, open courtyard, and were looking back at this building. The group was now wounded and dirty and exhausted. And, and the clouds looked ominous, almost as if like, like they just looked evil. They just flat out looked evil. Like they were going to drop all this stuff on them. And they appeared to have demonic sneers. It was almost like the clouds had a demonic sneer, just sneering at the, at the group that was outside in, in safety. And they all turned as a group. They looked at the building as it began to shake. And it began to shake from the top down. No earthquake. This was just like the, the, everything was shaken in, in that sense. And there were, there were people inside the windows. You could see some people were just reading quietly, watching TV as the smoke was filling their rooms. But they were up and they, they were just literally oblivious to what was going on, it seemed to have no fear because they were not even aware of what was happening and the building was shaking. Others were beating on the windows and they were screaming for the group to come back inside and help get them out. The group didn't move. Entire group led by the lady just began to weep and sob and cry 
over the people who were sitting inside, beating on those windows and not coming out. Seven more people, adults and teens, came out of the door and hugged those who had gotten their attention. So these were folks that had been beaten on the door and just had not come out when they were leaving. But they came out now as the building was shaken. The group embraced, this big group embraced of about now about 50 to 60 people now. The group embraced, they, they, they all leaned inside looking at each other and they, they hugged each other, this big embrace. And then there was this extremely loud thunderclap that I remember in the dream, it was like my ears almost wanted to pop, it was that loud. And the hospital collapsed, just like, it was like watching the Twin Towers all over. And when the dust settled, the group, that group of 60 people was gone. Not injured, not wounded, just gone. And standing where they stood, had been, was the man. And he said, the setting, the setting sun is soon, and the work this side for the bride will end. Go into the highways and the byways quickly, knock on every door, for I am coming soon. And that was the dream. Sheree, go right ahead. Okay, this, this dream, um, it, it was kind of interesting how Dana gave it to me. I want to start with that. And I want to say, too, if, if you want to get a pen and paper and write down some of these scriptures, where you can study this out for yourself, I think that would be good. But uh, Dana usually waits until he feels like he has all the dream to send it to me. And so he did that this time. And... Um, and I was sitting and, and I was praying one day and asking the Lord what he wanted me to know. And he started telling me some stuff. And I thought that sounds like almost like it, uh, it should go with Dana's dream. Only it didn't go with anything in the dream. And as I, I was just almost done writing what I was writing, Dana texted me again. And he said, I had something unusual. He said, I just had the first part of the dream. So he gets them in segments. But instead of getting the last part last, he got the first part last. And so I thought that was very interesting. It was also confirmation to me that, you know, how the Lord would, would direct as far as with the interpretation. Um, so let me just start on this. And I'm going to be a little longer perhaps this time and a little more detailed. Um, so just, you know, just letting you know with that. Uh, so it starts with him um, standing and watching these, these storms that are coming in. Um, and people are rushing into the hospital with bags of luggage and household items. Why do you bring luggage and household items to a hospital? It's like they're going to they're going to move in. Uh, are they are they sick? I mean, they're running up the stairs, so they're not sick, sick. And then he says an ambulance backs up to the front door and people jump out with hands full of bag groceries. They're, they're jumping and running out of the hospital. How, are they sick? And the answer is they're not sick. But yet they're wanting to just uh, be in this structure that represents um, the sickness and and the problem of um, of something. So it's a it's a structure that's not a healthy structure. Um, the, the guy with the he, the one guy had day old bread. Uh, it said day old. So this is somebody who is maybe trusted in the word at one point, but now they're, they're just trusting off what they heard a long time ago. They don't even have a personal relationship with it. It's stale and it's old. The Bible says to, you know, we should pray, give us this day our daily bread, right? That's, that's Jesus. That's partaking of him continually, but these haven't for a long time. And they're like, Hey, it's okay. I got a whole bunch of day, day old bread. Everybody can have it. And so that's that person who's saying, just, just, let's just believe whatever we believed and not press on to really know the Lord. Um, and so I thought that was kind of interesting in the dream. Um, these people are, they see the threats and the warnings, they see the stuff coming. And so they're running. Um, but are they doing the right thing? And um, it says, Dana says in here, uh, the people were running. Uh, quickened by the by lightning and the storms that were hovering over the hospital, but yet without rain. And so Proverbs 25, 14 says, like clouds and wind without rain, a man who boasts of a gift he doesn't have, you know, is, is that. So it's, it's this idea of, um, you know, do we really have what we claim we have? So then, um, 
uh, people are running in, they're dropping keys, they're trying to get into doors, they're bumping into people, so there's chaos. Keys are, are truths that unlock things. And so they're actually dropping the thing that could help them to get through. Um, and so that, that's kind of interesting. So then the elevator had a sign that said, not working today, please use stairs. So the elevator would be this, you know, being, uh, having power to go up, right? But it's like, no, that's not, that's not how this is working. You're running up the stairs in your own efforts, in your own works. And of course, you know, Dana's an, an observer with this, but this is a look at that which is dysfunctional. Um, okay. And then um, I thought about also Revelation because they were running out of fear. Revelation is 21, 7 through 8. It talks about how the overcomers will make it. There, there will be hard times. And those who overcome will make it, but the fearful and the unbelieving won't. Well, what is the fearful and the unbelieving? These are those who turn back, who don't move forward, who, uh, who, who just uh, stay where they're at because they're too afraid to, to go anywhere. That's the fearful and the unbelieving. Who it's okay to have some fear. I mean, Jesus at the garden before he was crucified, he prayed until he sweat blood. And he went and asked his uh, apostles, he said, how come you can't pray with me? Uh, he was very um, upset. And it's okay to be upset, um, but it's not okay to just stay there. You have to move forward and do whatever God's called you to do. That's Jesus said, you know, if you're mine, you got to take up your cross and follow me. He took up his cross. He didn't stay in the garden and just bleed out. He went and he took up his cross. And that's kind of the, the, the gist of this dream is um, it's time to get out of the sick bed and start moving forward and doing the great commission that God has called us to do. Yes. Okay, so um, this fire lightning, he goes outside, it says there's a large window uh, to the back of the, um, th that looks out from the hospital room where this, where this woman is. And uh, a window is to see something prophetically. And, and I just want to stop here and, and, and say this. This was what the Lord gave me before the, the Lord gave Dana the first part of the dream at the last. Okay. Um, I was sitting writing um, and uh, I, I wrote down, if we knew what it looked like before we proceeded, we would not have hesitation. And then the Bible says the spirit reveals the things that will come first Corinthians two, nine, uh, and then, uh, and 16. And then also Luke one 67 through 79. You can see that. So I, I said, what's the future look like? I just asked the Lord that, um, and scripture reference again, revelation 22, one through seven, Amos three, six through seven. It says that God does nothing before he doesn't first show his prophets. Right. And, uh, and I wrote, is there not a sound in the land, a voice of warning, a forevision of things coming? And why are people perplexed and distraught as if um, they don't walk with him? The fear of government, fear of death, division, none of this is the focus of the spotless church because uh, they will keep their eyes on the Lord and they will do uh, what he leads them to do and they will find peace and protection in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. And so read Psalms 23, the whole Psalm. And when you look at Psalms 23, read it this way. What part does God do and what part do I do? Because that's the separation there. And when you realize what he does for us, um, then it, it relieves a lot of fear. That's the valley of the shadow of death. I mean, that's yeah. where we're at right now. People are dying like crazy. My husband's like, I've never seen people dying so much. And it's not just of COVID. It's of a lot of things. And yeah. so, but we have a way to walk through that and we need to have that assurance and that foresight to know, know this is just where we're at right now, but he'll prepare a table for us in the midst of that. Yeah. Okay. But it, it might not look like a picnic lunch. <laughs> it's going to look like yeah. a battlefield because it's in the presence of our enemies. When we step out as a church and we start doing what God has called us to do, when we actually start knocking on the doors, I'm telling you, it's going to get rough. 
because the That's enemy's right. going to fight that, right? He, he's not going to yeah. fight someone laying in the, in the bed sick because it's just like, I'll just wait around until they die. He don't have to fight that. No, he fights the ones that come up, get up and say, we're going to do something. He's going to fight that. But but it's like I was telling Dana, it's like being in a foxhole. If you're in a foxhole and and there's artillery all around you, you know, you're like, you know, I'm going to hunker down. I'm going to be safe. Right. Uh, but but at some point you can't just stay in that foxhole because the enemy is, right. is coming at you. And so what you want to hear is you want to hear this voice behind you saying, go, this is the strategy. Now you need to go. And when that happens, you can jump out of the foxhole. You know, your determination, your adrenaline of fear now turns to adrenaline of I'm going to do something. I'm going to fight. Yeah. I'm going to combat. And, um, and, and it's purposeful. We need to have the purpose of the church. You want to turn your fear, turn it into purpose Absolutely. because that's his desire for us. Okay. So, um, he sees, uh, he, he sees this fire lightning is how he described it. So I asked him about that and he said, it's kind of like a, like a military strike. Um, but it, it wasn't a quick thing. It was a, a lingering thing. And there was fire involved with this. Well, this is the attack of the enemy. This is the enemy's strategy um, to try to take the church down. Of course, the enemy had strategy with Jesus in his crucifixion, but it backfired yes. on him. Right. Yeah. So we don't have to be afraid of the enemy's strategy, but we need to be aware of it and prepared for it. Okay, so this woman, this woman is, when, when Dana had the first dream showing this woman, this, that dream touched me so much. Because I'm like, finally, now we see the other side of the church. It's sick unto death. But, but Jesus comes, if you haven't watched the other one, Jesus comes and he embraces this woman and life comes back into her. And then he says, wait, um, because you're not ready to get up yet, get full strength back, and then you can yeah. move forward. And so now we see her moving forward. So this is exciting, right? She's got her strength. Because I asked him, I said, Dana, I said, how did she look? Was she still weak and frail looking? And he said, no, she looked healthy and, uh, um, and able and motivated is what he, what he told me. And so I'm like, yes, that's the church that's made itself ready, that's received the healing from God, because we there's so many things that we can't do that's why you want to read psalms 23 but we can follow the lord and in that he heals us and strengthens us and, and makes us able so this uh this um this fire lightning just a second i had a scripture i wanted to read with that it's first peter um let's see Four twelve 12 through 14, it says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Okay? We, we think in America, if we have a fiery trial, that something peculiar is happening to us. We should not think that. It's right. part of it. That's this, this, you know, these demonic faces in the dark clouds. That's the fiery trial that comes from the enemy. That's not the Lord. Okay. Yeah. Did the Lord permit it? Yes. Yeah. But is he doing these things to you and to your loved ones? Is he killing people and afflicting them? And do No, he's not doing that. He never has done that. You look in the Old Testament. Who afflicted the children of God when they needed correction? It was the heathen nations. And so the heathen nations would afflict and, and, and take them into captivity. And then later on down the road, after everybody learned their lesson um, and repented, then God would destroy those nations for coming against his people. So the enemy's going to get his. I mean, that's inevitable. But in the midst of it, we need to understand that it is not unusual for, for us to go through these things. Um, let me finish reading that scripture. So we're not supposed to think it's strange concerning the fire trial. But it says, but rejoice insofar as you share Christ's suffering that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. And we're going to see this a little further in the dream when the Lord speaks to her. Okay. So I love this picture of the woman. Uh, she's saying, I need to get out of here. 
you know, and, and so she's seeing the desperateness of the situation. There's a lot of people who are just like, Lord, just, you know, rapture us out. <laughs> this is not fun. And we are to always look for his peering, always. Yes. But in this situation, the man says, I need you to work. This is the focus of the message. It's time to work. It's time to get out there and win people to the Lord because people are dying and going to hell. Right. Pandemic or not, they're dying and going to hell. Right. And uh, and he says, uh, he says, I need you to work. Uh, and so the Lord is calling us. He's saying, I, I need I think Uncle Sam. I need you. <laughs> um, it says uh, and then she says, but things are crumbling around me. So she she conveys her distress at what she sees. And the man doesn't rebuke her for that. Instead, he takes her face in his hands and says, I will go through the fire with you, but you must work now. So the face and the hands is just like, you're my beloved daughter. You're my beloved child. I love you so much. I see where you're at. Your, your face is always before me. I never lose sight of you, right? That's what he's saying with the face in the hands. And he says, I'll go through the fire with you, but you must work now. So we're going to go through the fire. That's right. Okay. Um, so it goes on down. And she says, Lord, how can I do this? And so she asks, she's asking the right questions here. How can I do this? And he said, I have anointed you. I will lead you and guard you. So we need to have confidence in that continually. The Lord spoke to me a few weeks ago. Well, maybe a month ago. I don't know. Um, and he told me, he says, he says, there's uh, the first, the first two steps to fighting, to doing warfare are the first one is pray for protection. And I saw like a half wall around me that was like curved. And he says, the second thing is pray for direction because if, the Lord is our commander in chief and we're in a battle. We need to hear the directive of what we need to do next. And we need that continually in order to stay safe. So that's what you do to stay safe. Um, now for him to share this with me, he tells me constantly that I have supernatural protection, but I thought this is an unusual time. I don't need to just count on what he's constantly said to me. And I started praying, Lord, uh, protect me, protect me. I've been in some places where, you know, a lot of people might be nervous about being in, and yet God did protect me. Okay. And so he's saying this here. I have anointed you and I will lead you and I will guard you. Guarding is protection. So then um, the man spoke again and says, get out while you can and take who you can with you. So get out of what? Uh, it's yeah, this hospital. Well, what is what is the hospital? It's a dysfunctional system. And I'm not going to say that it's the church. I'm not going to say that it's the government. I'm not going to say it's anything. It's a dysfunctional system. We right. believe things that are dysfunctional, right? We're sitting in church and we're watching TV like these people in the in the ho in, in the hospital rooms. You know, they're knocking on the door, but they're just sitting there watching TV. It's like it's it's dysfunctional. Um, so he not only tells her to, 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 to go and to take as many as you can with you, that's, we're trying to take them to heaven. Okay. But he also said, um, uh, he repeated it and then he helped her get up. And so I love this. He helps her get up. Off. She's not weak. She's not incapable. She's, she's, uh, distressed emotionally, but he helps her get up. And so every step of the thing, what he can do, he will do. What is his part to do, he will do. And we just have to do our little part. Okay. Um, so this, this sign on the wall that says fifth floor, you know, in the dream, everybody goes up to this top floor. And, um, and so what is the top floor? It's like as you come down, uh, more and more people come out. He says, not, he says, I asked him this. I said, so was there a progression? I said, the people who ran in with all their goods, all their groceries and all their household stuff, the people who did, did they come down? And he said, none of those did. None of those did. So people who are looking for safety, but not relationship with the Lord, they're not going to make it. 
You can right. stockpile food, guns, all this other kind of stuff. But if you're not walking with the Lord, how long does it take for somebody to come snatch all your stuff away? How long does it take right. for bugs or critters to come devour everything that you've stored? Right. That's it. The only hope we have is Christ. So, so none of those people came down. Few people from the top came down. But as he got, but, and this is what he told me as I questioned about it. But as he got closer to the ground floor, he says pretty much all the people from the ground floor came out. So that is why is that they're, they're the hierarchy? It's a hierarchy of pride. Those who, you know, think they're okay, run into the top. Uh, whereas those who are humble come out. Okay. And then you have the answer of the people. They're saying, leave me alone. Uh, um, they're saying, stay put. They're, they're, they're trying to direct the church. Just stay put. Don't, don't go anywhere. Just stay like you are. It says, trust in man and stay. Right. There's a, a scripture I love. It says they, they trusted in the horses of Egypt, you know, and it wasn't a good thing. They trusted in their own power. We should trust in the Lord. The enemy wants to confuse you and tell you. Um, and and our close friends will want to tell us, just be safe. Just stay where you're at. And it's a lie. There's no safety in that. There's only right. safety in following the Lord. OK, so. Um, <clears throat> Her hair is caught on fire. There's pieces, some things hitting her on the head because the ceiling's falling in. Um, this is, you know, this is the attack that we're going to feel. We're going to feel the impact of this. This is not just going to be spiritual, but we're going to feel it, it, it impact. Uh, to hit a head is, is being attacked in our thoughts. Um, our hair is our glory. People are going to accuse us of being, you know, something that we're not. And But she pats it out. She doesn't let that stop her she doesn't let that fire just burn her head off <laughs> right she pats it out we have to do that with our thoughts because our thoughts are key with this um okay so i had this other scripture i wanted to read first peter 1 6 through 7 but i'll just let y'all read that first peter 1 6 through 7 and um and revelations 3 15 through 20 I'll let you read that, Revelation 3, 15 through 20. Um, the last part of that, though, verse 20, says, <clears throat> The Lord is saying, um, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. And so this is a call to salvation, the knocking on the door. And, and, and God has sent us into the world to do that, right? We can't expect him to just, uh, I mean, he has chosen the church to do the knocking. So that's, that's our right. responsibility. Luke uh, 14, 23 through 24 says, go into the highways and hedges and, com and compel them to come in. And this is what they're doing. It says, for I say, none of those bidden shall taste of my supper. Um, those who were called but don't actually come to the feast. It says they're not going to partake of Christ. They'll be void of that. So, um, so now the woman tells, she's going downstairs. She's knocking on doors. She's telling the people who come out, you guys need to knock on doors too. We need to tell everybody in the whole building. And so it's not for just the, you know, a person, it's for the whole church. It's like everybody who hears and understands, we need to warn people that they are lost and that they are dying and that they will be destroyed um, if they don't follow the Lord. So the, um, the woman says, beat on the doors and snatch them out if need be. And I thought of the uh, scripture, where is it at? Um, Jude. Is it Jude? Mm -hmm. um, but I thought of that scripture where you go into the highways and the hedges and you compel them to come, you know, um, snatch them out. Oh, yeah. What's how does that go? Uh, Brother Judy, Judy just says snatch them out, snatching them out of the fire.
Yeah. Getting, getting close to where it's burning is what he says, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So they're, they're going on down the, the stairs and the, the crowd is uh, growing. Um, it says they're, they're sweating and moving even more quickly. And so that's an element of they're, they're working hard and they're picking up the pace. They're not acting like they have all the time in the world to witness to people because we tend to right. do that. Right. Um, okay. And then, um, let me see what I haven't already covered because I kind of skipped ahead. The people reading and watching TV, this is again, you know, you got the people running the building who aren't even sick. And then you got people just sitting there oblivious with no fear, just just staying in the system. They're just laying there watching TV and reading and doing whatever, like nothing is going on. And uh, we don't need to be that crowd. Um, there were some that went back and helped some get out who were who were um, who got stuck. They were trying to get out, but they got stuck. And so those get help. Um, but then there were those who were screaming for people to come back and help them get out. So that already the doors have been knocked on and already they didn't move or do anything. But now when everybody's standing outside, you got these who are saying, come get me out. And it says the group did not move, but wept. And so to me, that's a picture of the, um, the 10 virgins. Uh, that's Matthew 25, one through 13. Uh, five of them say, you know, give us your oil. Uh, but we can't give anybody else our salvation. They have to get it for themselves. They have That's to be right. ready and prepared themselves. We can't give them what we have. Just them knowing us. I have one is not enough. Let me finish my sentence. I have um, a, an older friend. She considered herself a, a missionary to like this really dead church. Okay. And, um, and she used to tell them, she said, God doesn't have any grandchildren. He only has children. That's right. That's good. And so we need to remember that we're not going to make anything by association to anybody. You could be married to the preacher. You, your mama could be the most praying saint you ever know. It's what you have that's going that's right. to make the difference. That's right. Nobody's going to rescue you based off what they have. Okay. So then the, it collapses. And the man says, the setting sun is soon and the work this side for the bride will end. Go into the highways and the byways quickly. Knock on every door for I am coming soon. This is the call of the Lord since the early church. Right. Um, he has uh, he has always said he is coming soon. He's always said that so that we would work and so that we would be attentive. And so that we would not fall asleep. Um, this is the cry of the spirit to the church continually, continually. Yes. Uh, we are in the end times. We've been in the end times since the days of the apostles. We don't know the day of his appearing, but we know what we're supposed to do until he comes. And we're supposed to be a witness. We're supposed to lay down our ease and our comfort in order to do what he has called us to do in this earth. Hebrews 12, 25 through 20, 29 says, See that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, Yet once more and I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken which is things that have been made. So what's going to be shaken? The um, carnal things, the things that we've made with our own houses, our own hands, you know, our houses, our structures, it, whatever we've done will be shaken. And it says in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. And so that's the gold right there. Those things that cannot be shaken are heavenly things. We can't take anything with us, right? It's all going to burn up. Verse 20, it says, therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. Yes. 
Yeah. So that's what I got. I appreciate your insight, Trina. I'm going to tell you, one of the most important things to me was the fact that the woman, although she was healed and ready to go, was scared. There, there was there was a moment of, of intimidation because of the things that were going on around her, the fire, the stuff that she saw in the window. And, when, and she bent down to the ground because of fear. And when, when she said, Lord, I, I can't do this. I need to get out of here. He said, I need you to work. In other words, even though we, we, we are living in unprecedented times in this country right now, uh, I've talked to people today who are going to lose their job on Friday if they don't get something. I've talked to people whose kids are, are going through rebellion that they've never seen before. I'm talking to people who are just stunned right now. There, there, there's a lot of people in the church that are numb because of all the chaos that we're seeing. And many of us sense and know that this is an imminent dream. This is a now dream. This isn't for next year or years from now. I'm telling you, I feel more in my heart and my spirit. This is for now because of the things that we face. And I really believe that we're going to see a September that is explosive. And I do mean explosive because of the, you know, we, we live to the time where you're not going to have to wear a mask. You're not going to have to get this. And now, boom, it's you have to. And the forcing, the tyranny, the pushback that's coming. And a lot of believers are standing up and saying, I don't want to do this. And yet the intimidation is there. So I'm thankful the Lord turned her face up. He looked at her. He basically said, look at me. Look me in the eyes. Don't look around. Don't get distracted like Peter did on the water. Look at me. And that's how we're going to have to work. And that's how we're going to have to keep our eyes focused. Believers, if you're, you need, you need to deal with the sin and address it in your life. You need to make sure you're right with the Lord. You can't be, you know, a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James tells us that. And so many people in the church want to be able to have their sin and still get to heaven and and we got to get beyond that and just stay holy and righteous and focused. I believe the prayer event, the reason so many people are coming to Burksville to pray here in a couple days is because you feel the imminency. You feel the urgency. You realize that we are at a time and a place that we've never been in, in American history or in the American church history. And we have an incredible opportunity. And I believe that God has, has done a lot of things in the church in the last year and a half. And not just my dreams and warnings, but you folks have sensed that as well. You have sensed in your spirit, something's going on, something's shifting, something's changing. And so you have prayed, you've been in the word, you've been embracing yourself, some of you getting, are getting supplies and things, you're getting stocked up. But more than that, you've got your life right with the Lord. And we've got to be right with him for him to use us. And we've got to be willing to knock on the doors. You know, there were 10 virgins, five listened and five didn't. And we're seeing that right now in the church. And that parable was a parable not just for the centuries, that was a parable for today. And that's a message to the church. Get ready, stay ready, remain ready. And that's why we're going to need each other. I keep telling my church when we pray at the altar, that was body ministry. We need each other. And we're going to need each other in the church more than we've ever needed each other before. And we are going to deal with persecution and opposition. We're going to deal with that mindset that says just trust in man that does not want to hear the gospel that we preach or we teach or we share or we live by. Uh, we're going to start seeing more and more division in the Christian world between those that have gotten something and those that haven't. And those of us that have not gotten it cannot treat the people badly who have, even though they treat us like dirt. We have to remain uh, rooted and grounded in the way that we behave as Christ-like. And I believe the emphasis of this dream is get out while you can. In other words, things are starting to crumble and collapse around us. So what do we do? We get out of the building. I've been to California a couple times doing some missions trips uh, we went to UK Berkeley, went to San Francisco, went to People's Park. And while we were there, there was a slight earthquake. And, and we were outside in the People's Park area when, when it hit. And all of a sudden, you know, there's somebody preaching and teaching. There's some people yelling back at him. And suddenly, everybody gets quiet because the ground is just tremoring. And, you know, and I was standing there watching, listening, and praying. It was like, hey, ground's moving. There's no big trucks going by. There's nothing happening around me. The ground is moving. And therefore, I realized I experienced my first earthquake in California. And there are people running out of buildings next to that area and some of the houses and just looking back. And they were looking back at their houses. And when I saw that image, I was reminded of the fact that they didn't know how safe it was to go back in. They didn't know how strong the earthquake was. And this was in the days before cell phones, like 1990, so, or no, 1992, 1991. So there was no cell phones and things like that. People couldn't you know, get on their app and find out how bad the damage was or whatever. The people came out because the building was shaken. And I'm telling you right now, folks, the building is shaking. The building is shaking. And the Lord's warning us 
Get out while you can and take who you can. That's the most important part. Not just get out. The important part is that we take as many people with us as we can. So you need to pray for your neighbors that are lost. You need to start speaking up and speaking out. And the, the crazy things that we're seeing in culture right now with forced mandates and things like that, you've got a chance to, to speak up and speak out for your faith. And yes, it may very well cost you your job. we got to face the facts. Some of us are going to lose jobs because we won't do something. And some of us are going to have to deal with really trusting the Lord. I, I've been saying this for several weeks on my Pray With Me podcast. I believe the church right now is ready to experience the righteous will live by faith. And we're going to have to, we're, we're going to find out really who has faith in the church world. Because when you lose your job and you lose your health care and you lose all these things and you're trusting God, and you're, you're trusting God to be completely focused on him. He's going to be the only thing you need. And to get to that place in faith, man, it requires, it, re it requires a walk in the spirit rooted and grounded in the word, time in prayer, and just saying, okay, God, I'm going to trust you to feed my family, take care of my health care needs, take care of all these things. And we've never had to do that in the American church. And I'm thankful that God's putting us there because in that context, if you can't get health care, hey, come to a church that knows how to pray. And we're going to pray for miracles. And we're going to pray for healings. And we're going to trust the Lord to do great things. You know, we're going to have to be the ones that give people hope. And, and I'm going to knock on as many doors as I can, literally and figuratively speaking and spiritually speaking. I'm going to start praying for the lost. And I, I, my, my, my time of praying for the lost has increased probably 20 fold since I had the first dreams and put them out there. And we've warned you, brace yourselves. But it wasn't just me. There's others that are saying the same things. They're passionate to preaching the word. Jesus warned us. James warned us. Jude warned us. Paul warned us. Peter warned us. And these fiery trials we're going through right now, there for the testing of our faith. And so, Saint, I want to give you just a bit of advice. Stay connected to the body. Stay accountable with other believers and realize that God's going to use your faith to make a difference. There are people out there that have walked away from the church. They're going to start starting to realize, man, all this stuff I heard about from my preacher years ago, those things are happening. And if it's happening now, that means we're close to that thing. And I'm not pushing rapture. I'm not pushing mid-trib. All I'm saying is this. You better be ready when Jesus comes, whenever that is. And I've not changed my opinions. I've not changed my theological beliefs. But I've, I'm, I've changed one thing. I know I need to emphasize more and more. People get ready. People get ready and stay ready. People stay ready because Jesus is coming. So whatever you want to do with this dream, I'm fine with it. But I want to tell you something. The urgency of the imminency of his return is being spoken to us clearly every day. And when the headlines begin to re read like Matthew 24 and passages from Daniel, which is where we are right now, we're seeing those things. We need to get excited about it, too. There's no room for fear. Yes, the woman was fearful because she saw what was coming against her. And like, 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 like Cherie said, that window was a prophetic thing. Yes, difficult times are coming. Paul said, perilous time, in the end times, perilous times. In the, last dif in the last days, difficult times will come. Perilous times will come. We're there. I'm pretty sure that everything we're facing right now qualifies as perilous and difficult. So what does that put, where does that put us? Right where the Lord wants us to be. And I believe that God allowed us to be born in such a time as this with an incredible message before he comes to let the watching world know he's coming back. So folks, we cannot afford to play games. You need to deal with your sin, leave it at the altar, be accountable to people who can pray with you when you struggle with it again. We need to be as holy as we can, as righteous as we can, as, as, as godly as we can become right now. Keep the armor on, keep your heart rooted and grounded in his word, stand on it when you can do nothing else, and believe what God's going to do in your life. In your life. And so, Sheree, would you mind just praying just over the emphasis of what's going on and that, that people will just get what God's trying to say? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Let me say this real Holy quick. I, you know, the Lord's been telling me for about 10 or 12 years that difficult times were coming, but that those who truly knew him and trusted in him would do exploits during those times. That's the yes. season we're coming into. That emaciated woman getting up out of bed and starting to do it, that's uh, exploits that we're going to see in this yes. time that's coming. He showed me, you, you wonder, you know, why are you doing this stuff with Dana? Let me tell you why I'm doing this stuff with Dana. Because the Lord showed me when this was going to start. And and I've got I've got evidence of it. But the Lord showed me when this was going to start. And and so he showed me it. And then and then I saw the pandemic. And then I saw Dana and, and he was echoing the same things. 
and and it, and it keeps happening over and over again. I saw the cloud just uh, about a month ago. I was in Pensacola. Well, it was it was exactly three weeks ago. I was in P Pensacola, and I got so attacked by the enemy in my body physically. And I saw this dark. Well, I didn't see it. Somebody was praying with me, and they said they saw this dark cloud ro ro rolling in over the coast. And and what I saw was this mean faced uh, uh, demon face. It was angry this angry demon face. And I'm like, that's what's attacking right now. And that's what's coming. And so yeah. I, I had to take a stance and I had to say, devil, no, you're not attacking me. I'm going to stand yes. in health. The Lord is my healer. And, um, and, and I'm going to walk on, you know, you're not intimidating me. So let me just pray. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you're giving us warning in advance. This is your great mercy and your great love for your church. And so I speak peace to the hearts of your people, that they would armor up like warriors to fight and not run like cowards, Lord God. But Lord, that we would be strong, that we would know that you're people, and that we would be exploits, that we would call on you and feel your loving embrace as you take us and you hold us and you pick us up and you encourage us and you heal us and then you you say now you can do the work that I've called you to do. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're doing that with us, the church. I thank you for your great love and mercy for us. I thank you, Lord, that it's not too late for anybody who wants to turn to you right now. It's not too late. And I ask that you just convict their heart. And I thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Let me just say, I had a conversation right before I, I uh, doing this today, and this lady asked me, she says, you know, I, I, I'm this age, I've been in church for a really long time, and I had sin in my heart the whole time. And they said, can I still get right with God? And let me tell you, it don't matter how late it is, you can still get right with God. If you have breath yeah. in you, if you're still alive, you can repent of your sins. So don't let the enemy deceive you or try to keep you because he will tell you you're not worthy, but we're not made worthy by what we've done. We're made worthy by what Jesus has done. And he says, if we ask for forgiveness, he is faithful and just to do it. And so that means he has to do it if we're turning to him in honesty and sincerity. And so you can do that right now. Just ask the Lord, Lord, forgive me for sinning. Change my heart. Because Absolutely. you can't change your own heart. Only he can change it. And ask him, say, Lord, change my heart. I believe in you. And I want to walk like I need to walk to make it through these times and to make it through any times and to see you and be with you eternally in heaven. That's what I want. That's what I want my purpose to be. And he'll hear that prayer and he'll answer it. That he will. Hey, I want to show you guys the most prayed for dog in America. <laughs> and I mean that. Uh, so grateful for your prayers for her. She's really struggled. And matter of fact, while I was doing this podcast, they kind of know what happens on each day. And she was right here beside me laying in her little bed, but she kept once, uh, once um, we were getting ready to pray, she got closer to me because they're always usually, this is when I do my Tuesday prayer in the spirit and my practical prayer in the spirit podcast. And they, when I start praying in tongues, always come up to me. And so when they begin to know I'm going to pray. So she started scratching on my legs a minute ago. And uh, can't tell you how much I appreciate all the prayers for my family. I know it sounds crazy. Um, I've probably cried more in the last three days. I've cried in a, in a lifetime for, for, for the loss of my dog. But uh, this is the most prayed for dog in America. I probably got a thousand emails and comments. And it means a lot. It means a lot. Because we realize, folks, that we're, we are living... We're in the we're in the toes of the statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw and and, and Daniel interpreted. Uh, things are falling apart, crumbling around us. But God has said to us to go out and do His work, work while it's yet day, and uh, so get out while you can and take who you can with you. Make a difference in the watching world. Uh, that woman was scared, but yet the Lord gave her strength. And notice He wasn't you know He wasn't seeing you. Know, you couldn't see Him in the dream walking beside her. She walked out in the power and of his strength and his might and did the work God called her to do. Even though it was scary and it was fire and things were burning around her, she commit, she completed the work regardless of what it looked like around her. She wasn't afraid. So uh, thanks for joining us today with this. Cherie, thank you for your time. And uh, we're just going to trust the Lord to take to take uh, this broadcast, this, this dream, and make a difference in somebody's life. And... Uh, Hope to see most of you again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Central uh, for a pray with me. 
and uh, kind of give you some more details of what's happening on, on Saturday, 10 to 4. We're going to be praying uh, here in Burksville at the church, uh, praying not for the nation, not for the president, but for the church and the state of the church to stay where it needs to be and to do what it needs to be, be what it needs to become uh, in these days where his return is so soon. So God bless folks. Thank you, Cherie, for being a part of this as always. And uh, God bless folks. Have a great rest of the day.